I'm Logan from with the Backwoodsman's Institute. Today in this video, we're going to be talking about trail sets for coons using 220 counter bears. Now we got a coon in this one right here, perfect catch right behind the head. So I'm going to take this coon out of here, we're going to re remake this set, and I'm going to show you why I chose the set in this location. All right, this is that trail I was talking about. It's clearly defined now because the water level rose, probably about a foot in this little pond from last night's rain. But this little waterway was on the bank, and you can see where they're walking through here. Now, you got a point of intersection where they come to the water going this way, and also that same trail goes right through here. Now, this is where I set the 220, and obviously, we got a coon there. And up this trail, the reason why I selected it is because it's really well used. It's almost like a cow path going underneath the briars up there. So I'm going to take this coon out. I'm going to zoom in a little closer. And we're going to reset this. And I'm going to talk about this trail a little more. All right, so here's the trail right here. It's hard to see how well defined it is through the camera. I'm looking through the screen right now. But it goes right through these saplings right here. It goes up into the cornfield that way. And it goes down to the pond going this way. How to tell the difference between a coon trail and a deer trail is by looking at the brush over top. All right, a deer trail, the main part of the deer's body is going to be about three foot off the ground. The saplings and stuff will be all pushed away to one side or the other. Again. A real big, tall trail, even though it might be worn down just like this one is, the saplings up top will be a dead giveaway of if a deer's body is making th a trail through there. This is stays about most of the the underbrush is only pushed away about a foot off the ground so I know this is a low-lying critter trail such as coon and possum and stuff like that so this is where I'm going to be setting my traps uh, my trail sets with 220 counter bears all right this right here is a 220 counter bear it's a body gripping trap and it is also a killing trap so you want to be very mindful of where you set it you don't want to be set in an area where cats or, or dogs can run around in now, if you have permission to trap another person's property, ask them if it's okay if you, you can use one of these. Maybe they got some cats or dogs they don't want you to set these out. Don't just set them out and uh, hope that it's okay. Usually when I trap another person's property, I just use dog-proof coon traps or just make pure water sets. So I don't catch any cats or dogs that are running around. So with the 220, this is how it works. It's got two springs. You need to compress these on both sides and then fold the box over and set it. So I'm gonna show you. One of the ways to make this easy is with a trap setter. It's basically just two two long arms pieces of metal that are hinged in a spot where you can grab a hold here and kind of use them as a pliers. That makes it a lot easier but if you don't have any all you have to do is hook on to the end here or you can use your foot if you, if you want to but they got this safety hook right here so whenever you're setting the trap you don't get your hand in there. So set that safety hook just like that and do the other one. I just grab a hold right here Safety hook, pinch them as tight as you can together, just like that. All right, now you take the box portion of this trap right here and get your springs on these hinges. Open them up, keep positive control on this right now. Now you see how that safety hook just came undone? I'm holding this right now with my hand, but you want to slide this up to where it stays tight. That way it, it ain't going to let this spring open up and get, you, get yourself in this trap. Same thing on the other side. Move your safety hook up tight. Because if it's down here, when you go to setting, it might just pop off and it can go off. You have to remake your set. Then you take your dog and your trigger, and this one has two notches. Usually I set mine on the second notch just because it has some, some more spring tension on the, the downstroke. All right, you can set your trigger in the middle. I can set it off to one side or the other. Some people like to put their trigger on the bottom just like this so they don't damage any guard hairs on the back. I usually put mine on top. I'm not too worried about that. There's not that much damage that happens. But what I like to do is I like to slide it over to one side just like that. This, that way if a rabbit or a squirrel comes down this, this path right here, it can get through there without tripping this trap. But a coon going through there is going to hit it with something. Now you want to line up your trap on the trail. I like to set these up off the ground about an inch or two. How I achieve that is I take my springs and tilt them down a little bit. All right, Kind of make a Y with them springs. Then they'll be sitting there just like that. You want this to be sturdy. 
Now's the time we're going to hammer our stakes in. What you do is you take your chain, the circle loop on your chain right here, line it up with the bottom of this circle on your spring. Then we're going to drive our stake in just like that. Since I got my stakes in already, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the chain, slide it up over the stake, take my spring, slide it up over that stake, and the same thing with this stake right here. Now I like, if the ground's soft, I like to push the springs into the mud a little bit. The key with this thing is to making sure that it's completely solid. It still rocks a little bit, okay? So what I like to do is I take a stick, stick it in the ground on one side. You can do this on both sides, it doesn't matter. And set it between the jaws of that 220 counter bear. Because when the counter bear opens, if it's like this right now, it's going to scissor like this away. So this stick, right, this stick right here is just supporting this trap from wobbling. You can do the same on the other side. Right now I got two stakes on each side of my 220 counter bear and I got two sticks inside of the jaws right there. Now this thing's rock solid. The only thing that's going to move is the trigger and that's going to get the coon. Now what you can do also, you want to make sure that they, they can't go around one side or the other of your counter bear. So if you have to, take some vegetation, some grass, make it look somewhat natural where they don't have any option besides. I got some grass on both sides of that trap. Now all this coon sees is an open trail going through there and he's going to get caught in that 220 corner bear. The last thing you want to do before you walk away is you want to undo your safeties on these arms here. That way this trap will fire. All right, this one produced a possum. Same type of trail. It ain't opened up at the top, so I knew it was a low-lying critter that was going through here. So I set a 220 on there, and it produced a possum, which is good. We need to, get, we need to manage some of them as well. But this set right here, the 220 counter bear, it is a killing trap. It goes very quickly. You got to be careful with where you set it. There's going to be cats or dogs running around. You don't want to get that in there. Now, a plus about the 220 counter bear is it doesn't leave any blood to deter animals to go back in that area. A big boar coon sometimes be pretty weary if there's blood from a, a recent catch in an area, let's say a foothold or a dog proof coon trap, something like that. Sometimes it can deter them from going back to that same spot and hitting that trap. 220, it's pretty quick, there's no blood, so that trail can be used over and over and over again with that set and coons will still be going through there. So I hope you guys liked the video, catch you in a bit.